Today I'm making a 14 karat gold ring with a wooden inlay from this wooden ornament that is made from a piece of wood that is over 100 years old. It's got a really cool story behind it and I'll explain a little bit more as we go along. So the first thing I need to do is take my favorite knife. This is an old Stanley knife I got from an old neighbor of mine and lightly shave off a thin layer of wood that I can use to inlay into the ring. And the nice thing is this wood is already about the same width as the inlay. So I should be able just to shave off a tiny layer and still be able to save the ornament. So I'm just taking a brand new blade and lightly scraping it along the wood to shave off just a tiny little layer. And this only works when you have a really, really sharp blade and some woods it's not as easy to do. This just happened to work out perfectly. Now that I've got some of the shavings, you can see it's pretty close to the right width, but it's too big. So I'm gonna have to take a measurement of the size of the inlay. And then I'm gonna use this little caliper as a guide for trimming down those little shavings so they'll fit perfectly in the inlay. Once I've got it trimmed up, I'm gonna take a little chunk and just make sure it fits in there perfectly and it's not gonna be too hard to inlay and not too big or too small. And then I'll trim the rest of these little pieces I cut off so that I have enough that even if I screw some up, I, I have enough scraps that I can completely get around the entire ring. And then I mount it into my lathe so it's, I've got a nice, easy, stable working position to start inlaying, and I can use both my hands without having to hold, without having to hold the uh, ring in one hand and then try to inlay it. So I'm just gonna put down a thin layer of the CA glue and just try to tack this little piece on there. And then take the back of my blade and just roll it over and try to seal it into place. You've got about 10 seconds of working time with this, this type of glue. Um, when you, if you put it on too early, it's gonna be too wet and too loose. If you put it on too late, it's gonna be too tacky and you won't be able to manipulate it. So there's just about a two second window you have to get it exactly where you want and get it tacked down. And then later I can come in with more glue and get all the high spots pushed down and secured to the gold and then just layer it up as I go along. So I'm basically just working my way around the ring, putting little chunks in where I can and trying my best to match up the grain and make sure that it looks uniform and that there's no big gaps or anything. And this is, this is the hardest part about doing these style of rings is because you always end up with a little bit of super glue on your, your blade and then it, it sticks to your blade and it's moving around and right when you think it's dry, it lifts up and it's just kind of a, a pain. But the effect is, is really beautiful. It's okay if it spills over onto the wood that's already inlaid because that just helps glue it down but if it starts layering up on the uninlaid areas, just the, the part that has just gold into it, it would start building up and not leave me enough room to inlay the wood into the ring. Because I need this wood to lay down flat enough that I can build up enough of the CA glue to create a protective layer so that, you know, if it gets wet or if it starts, if someone happens to rub it against a brick wall or something, that it's not going to wear down the finish to a point where the wood will start pulling off of the ring. And as I finish this up, I'll, I'll give you a little information about where this wood came from and why it was significant to this couple. So this is an email I got from the person that commissioned the ring, Hannah, 
She said, so my fiance's grandmother, Zora, and her family owned a farm. She had 11 kids and her husband died of ALS super young. So she really held down the fort for years. Uh, she passed away in 2011 and they had to have the barn torn down years ago. But one of his aunts saved a piece of wood from it and made us those Christmas ornaments. So I just think it's a really cool story and a really unique way of saving some family history and giving his ring some significance. Now I've got the majority of the inlay covered in the wood. I'm gonna take some more of the CA glue and start coating it building up that protective layer so that there's a nice barrier between the world and the inlay. The world's a harsh place. It's not for beautiful little rings. Now I've got enough built up, I'm going to put it back into the lathe and start it up. And I'm gonna start leveling off that thick layer of CA glue and make sure that I really do have the inlay below the surface of the ring. And then I'm gonna come in afterwards and just keep layering it up so that I have at least a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half of the CA glue covering the wood. I'm also using a file to help make sure I got that perfectly straight and that the edges are nice and crisp. Cause I don't want there to be any areas around the corners of the inlay that, that water's gonna be able to seep into. Now I'm going to clean it up and try to get off, get out as much of that uh, dust and those shavings as possible before I start putting more CA glue on. Then I'm just going to do another flood coat and let it dry. And you can already see some of that really pretty aged wood grain coming out through the finish we're putting on it. And then do another coat. Then I'm going to move my tool rest out of the way and start sanding the finish because I want it to be really level and if I keep adding glue on top of it without leveling it off I'm going to get a really ridgy looking ring so after each coat I try to level it off so that I get a nice clean finish. So on a ring like this I'll, I'll put on maybe 10 or 20 different coats and just keep sanding and leveling and filling spots and filling low spots and sanding high spots just until I get it perfect. And now that I've got the glue built up enough, I'm going to take my flat tool and just start level it off and try to get it as flat as possible and remove as many of the little scratches that were caused by the sandpaper as possible. Then I'll move to a finer grit sandpaper. And then finally onto some polishing compound. A lot of people like to use different types of rouges and polishes for various things. I've always really liked this Mother's Polishing Wax. It's, it's, I think it's mostly for aluminum, but it works really, really well with this type of finish. And now you can see that shine finally starting to come out after a, a few layers of polish. And now we're basically done. You can see that really high shine and it really brings out the depth in that wood. It shows enough of that old wood texture and it really shows the history of the wood rather than just having a really clean piece of wood that you can't tell is old. It really shows that old texture and that weathering that's, that's in the wood and really represents how old this wood really is. And I'm really happy with how it turned out.